on display. For Florida, they have senior Carolyn Cano. In her, you have such a talented, pure athlete. She actually played outside hitter at Michigan for a couple years before transferring to the Gators to play the libero position full time. She's second in the league with 4.6 digs per set. She has a great ability to read hitters and a fiery personality that feeds this team. For Kentucky, another senior, Ashley Dusek, is the two-time reigning SEC libero of the year. She was out earlier this year with injury, and since she's returned to that libero jersey, she has put up double-digit digs in every match. And in fact, in that run, Kentucky is undefeated with Ashley Dusek at libero. Not to mention the fact that we're going to have a little game of keep away going on within these matches. Both opponents try to limit the touches for these two talented liberos. Well, both of these liberos, top 10 in the SEC, Canopa, all SEC selection last year. And you want to know what's at stake, not only first place positioning in the SEC, but also postseason implications on the line here as the RPI numbers are out and three and five are Kentucky and Florida respectively. And a chance to potentially host a regional. Underway here and good crowd on here, hand here this Wednesday night. Leah Edmond going up from the left pin here is Allie Monterey and 15, China, China Joseph, she was denied. Mary Wise, the leading lady for the Florida Gators, and she's chasing 900 victories, and her team thus far has done a great job. Ever since that October 15th loss to Kentucky, they've won four straight. They've beaten three teams by a sweep. So they are looking mightily strong, especially with number five, Rachel Kramer, in the middle. On the other side, there's Craig Skinner in his 13th year, and the highest ranking in the Skinner era at number six in the country. And boy, he's done a terrific job. And this could be the year for Kentucky. He feels like this group is very mature and a calm presence. They're able to battle back and fight through. So Kentucky gets the point. And that time the ball appears to stay along. Neither line judge calls a touch, but the up official that play is right in front of him and he overrules them with the touch call. Leah Edmonds said coming into this one, it would be huge to swing high off of hands. And we've seen a couple of those swings already. Brian Himmelgarn and Mike Hamilton. The three, one and two. Or up and down, as you may know. Try to get saved and wonderful effort by Gabby Curry and somehow McKenzie Watson gets it over. Shia Joseph says, it ends now. We talked about the defense in this match tonight. We said we could have defensive fireworks that could outshine or at least match the offense of these two teams. And you're getting a look at why. In this rotation, Kentucky has three defensive specialists across the back row, along with their libero, Mackenzie Watson, and Gabby Curry also on the court. They are going to keep balls alive. And Leah Edmond handles the bump set from Madison Lilly, their spectacular freshman setter. And Edmond, who had 19 kills in their first meeting, continuing on. She fires away in the left back on that one, right near Canope, who's not able to make a play on it. Canope only had six digs in the earlier meeting between these two teams. Well, it's been an interesting series, to say the least, when these two teams meet up. 64th overall, Kentucky won the last one back on October 15th, and actually they've won three of the last four. However, Florida has controlled it historically. Allie Gregory able to get that one to just bounce in. So thanks to the net, a service ace in Florida with the 4-3 lead. And Allie Gregory is a Louisville native, but as a sophomore, did not play here in Kentucky a season ago. They only played in Gainesville, so this is her first trip back to her home state. Sometimes you wonder, are there nerves there, or is there excitement? Mia Sokolowski, number nine on the left side, and Sokolowski, we're getting to see her again. We didn't see her. Uh, for a little bit because of uh, some changes in the rotation, but she's coming in and making a strong impact. 
Sokolowski started the season splitting time with Paige Hammonds. Paige Hammonds, a freshman outside hitter, going across the back row, and Sokolowski across the front row in a couple of huge wins for Florida over Texas and Nebraska. Paige Hammonds won that front row spot and had played all six rotations, but tonight we're seeing him go with Sokolowski. She just had a good outing at Mississippi State where she had four kills on six attempts. And Florida doubles their lead thanks to Al Hassan, one of the best in the middle. Al Hassan leading the league in the nation in blocks per set, and this team is fourth in the nation in blocks per set with over three blocks in a single set. That's not in a match, folks. Those are huge numbers if you don't follow volleyball. Three stuffed blocks in a set is really amazing. And she's seven away from the all-time leader in Florida as the Gators are now on a 4-0 run. Skinner able to hit them where they, they ain't. And this is a little bit of gamesmanship here as you saw Cheyenne Husky for Florida go with a deep tip shot on second contact. Kentucky comes back at him. Avery Skinner, the deep tip shot, she finds the hole. Nice heads up play by the freshman out of Katy, Texas as her fellow Texan, Ashley Dushek on the serve. Watson, Lily, Franklin. That hits the antenna and means it's out of play, so the point goes to Florida. Lily Franklin, fifth year senior for the Wildcats. This is a nice choice in transition. As you see, the Florida block does not close there, so they dodge a bull at that time as Franklin hits the antenna. Something Emily Franklin talked about before this match is that they have a goal to get six transition kills, or excuse me, seven in each set. So that's something they're very aware of is working hard in transition. And right now, Florida opening up in this first set looking very composed and calm as they've been playing some excellent volleyball as of late. And you see there as Paige Hammond serves another Louisville native. So a freshman returning to her home state for the first time as well. The lead is now out to five, and Craig Skinner decides to call a timeout. The fourth-ranked Florida Gators on the road here in Lexington and looking sharp early. Fresh off their remarkable comeback win over Penn State, JT Barrett and the sixth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes battle Iowa at Kinnick Stadium Saturday at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. Florida out the gates pretty quickly as they're on a 6-1 run, and what they've done thus far, Missy, is kind of take this crowd out of it just for the time being. Well, we saw this happen in Gainesville. Kentucky came in and did the exact same thing. It's early, but Kentucky already has four attack errors and is hitting negative numbers. We saw them recently at LSU in the first two sets. They were down 0-2. LSU is the only SEC team to push them to five, and a lot of that had to do with Kentucky errors early in the match. Well, Al Hassan just better offense there. As Al Hassan averaging 
almost three kills per set. She's gotten stronger and stronger as three-time All-American has boosted her play in SEC. And Skinner with the spin off the net and gets it to drop. Skinner, only a freshman, is 10th in this league in kills per set. And with the combination of Skinner and, of course, Leah Edmond opposite her on the left side, you feel like Kentucky could maybe boast the best combo of outside hitters in this league. They never have a down rotation at that left pin. She had 10 kills in that first meeting against Florida. Right now, the Gators just clicking. It's a really nice swing by Carly Snyder on the left side for Florida because she knows Kentucky's going to have a big middle block. Whether it's Kaz Brown or Emily Franklin, she chooses to go down the line there. You avoid that block, but you also avoid the defensive play of Ashley Dushek. Keep it out of her lap. The service error from Ramat Al Hassan. She rotates out. Rachel Kramer, the 6'8 sophomore, comes in the front row. And Gabby Curry back to serve, the freshman out of Buford, Georgia. Started for Dushek, you mentioned, who was out with injury for the early part of the year and then did a very good job. A net violation called on the Wildcats. A nice back row attack there by Paige Hammonds out of middle back and what was somewhat of an out of system pass. Paige does a good job calling for that and because Kentucky's doing everything they can to get a triple block up on a back row attack, they're able to pull them into the net there. But once again, it's a Kentucky error that results in that Florida point. Edmund adjust. Canope, tight pass. And Emily Franklin handles the overpass beautifully. And that's one you'd like to have back because the Florida block does everything right. They slow that down. Canope has an ability to make a play on it, but you get the overpass there. And there's just nothing that Monterey can do with that one. She's been playing her best volleyball has Emily Franklin during this 14 match win streak. And what they're calling there is that Ali Monsere actually went under the net. So her entire foot over that line, it's directly under the net. And obviously that is a rule because of safety issues and rolling ankles if you were to do that. And tough block as Kramer went right at Kaz Brown. And number seven, Ian White, is fearless at the net. This game is such a game of momentum, and if there's a play that creates momentum, it's a stuffed block. And not only does Kaz Brown stuff block it, but she has the ability to celebrate in a way that creates a momentum of its own. Once more, a net violation called on Florida, so that helps Kentucky run off four straight points. Best three of five sets have to Go to 25, win by two. And Shina Joseph with the tip shot. Well, she has been crushing it as of late. The last four matches, Shina Joseph has really risen to the occasion. We'll see. She's hit 409 in those last four matches, 34 kills. And Florida said that they've really worked on their right side connection. After that loss at Kentucky, they realized they needed another wrinkle offensively, and that can be Shina Joseph. Stood there from Ali Monterey, the back row attack, the tip shot from Snyder, and diving there was Madison Lilly. The free ball. Florida with another opportunity, and right at Madison Lilly, high in the sky, bump set, Matt. There's great play again by the libero, Canope. Florida gets the point. And that's going to be a back row attack call, exactly, because their setter for Kentucky coming out of the back row, trying to make a play on that. She's obviously not intending to send it over the net, but because the pass was tight. But what I like, both of these teams realize that if they can attack from the right side, that even if it's not a kill, they're forcing the setters to make first contact and take the other team out of system. So there is, there's a lot of chess match going on within this one right now. Kentucky, five kills, five errors for Florida. 
They're hitting 250. Mackenzie Watson on the serve. Florida passing with just two there in that rotation. So Kentucky down by just two. And Rachel Kramer, who was the most successful Gator offensively in the first meeting between these two teams of 15 kills, has had a couple errors, a couple miss hits here. Monterey decides to go to Joseph. Joseph down the line. The block did not close there, and I expected Shiny Joseph to swing angle on that one. She surprises me as she cranks one down the line. So Knope on the serve, and ABCA All-American honorable mention. Oh boy, Edmund just took a big hack at that one. Leah Edmond said coming into this one, I actually like swinging against a big block because I can see the hands. And she said in Gainesville, we kept reminding each other, swing high, go for hands. And she has consistently done that. It takes a lot of discipline from the left side to swing high off those hands. The Florida block has slowed a couple of those down, and now it's up to the defense back there to make a play out of those. Edmond to Lily to Skinner. And the attack error gives Florida the point. In what looks like a big error, you think, whoa, she really missed the court. It's because these players are trained to swing high and to go for those hands. So when there's a miss, it looks like a really wide miss, but it can just be a miss by centimeters when you're going, or a centimeter when you're going for those hands. Kaz Brown says, I'll take it. Folks, just want to remind you, this is some high level volleyball. Two top 10 teams in the country out of the SEC. And Kaz Brown, along with her counterpart, Emily Franklin, and then of course for Florida, Ramad Al-Hassan and Rachel Kramer, four of the best middle blockers, not just in this league, but in the country. You're seeing some elite level athleticism. These players play so high above the net. It's not just because they're tall, but the leaping ability you're seeing tonight is incredible. For Cheyenne Husky, who has been put in for three rotations, Great setter's dump there from the softball. Cheyenne does a really great job of holding her head steady. Both hands come up. She disguises it so well. But Tiffany, as we talk about the great middle blockers in this match, interestingly, it's Cheyenne Husky who has the second best blocking numbers, only to Ramad Alassane, in this match. As a setter, she is the best blocking setter in the country. And right there, she pairs up with Ramad Alhassan for the deadliest block in the league. As you put Cheyenne Husky next to Ramad Alhassan. That's a tough wall to hit around. Absolutely, Al Hassan, second in the country, right behind Chiaka Akbagi with 1.77 blocks per set. Cheyenne Husky at 1.2 blocks per set. And that was tight to the net, Madison Lilly, and it was just so hard for her not to actually go into it. She's called for the net violation, 1914 Florida. Well, the Gators on the road and feeling good here at Memorial Coliseum. Yesterday, if you were in the mood, it was Halloween. And so the Gators decided to take part in the festivities and dress up in their costumes. And certainly, does that look familiar? That was Khaleesi, okay, and her dragon. Watch out now. And then we have a little Lion King, you know, action perhaps here. The lion, the giraffe, popcorn. There we go. The Gators traveled in style, but that's my winner right there. We got some wobbly men. And Coach Wise with the quarterback, if you could read those lips. But if you look down low, down under in this one, Shina Joseph, the scuba diver. She might be my winner. She could be like, you know, like it was Steve, the scuba diver. Yeah. It's Shina, the scuba yes. diver. Yep. So these Gators playing awfully well number four team in the country. And of course, everyone is curious to know just what the committee is thinking about as the top 10 rankings will be released in our next match here on ESPNU during the Texas-Kansas State match. And certainly Florida interested in wondering where they may fall along with Kentucky as well. I think this Gator fan might be looking up the top 10 on this phone. He might be using the ESPN app. Who knows, you know? But with Kentucky as number three in the RPI, Florida 
at number five. And you've got to think, again, Missy, the winner of this one could put themselves in very good position to potentially host a regional. Yeah, it's easy to get wrapped up in the fact that the SEC crown is on the line. These girls are playing for a ring. But this one has huge national implications in that Florida is not, excuse me, but volleyball is not a predetermined regional site. So the winner of this one you think would put themselves in a really good position to possibly host a regional right now in the latest RPI release. The top five spo spots are all hogged by Big Ten and SEC schools. Two conferences in that top five in the RPI. And we were here a couple of years ago when the Wildcats last hosted a regional in 2015. Another great effort. Florida gets the point. And again, we're not lost on the fact that you know, Florida shared the crown with Mizzou last year for the SEC title. Kentucky looking to win their first outright since 1988. That was one more kill up there by Carly Snyder just moments ago. And do you see the trend in that they swing down the line and they continue to avoid Ashley Dushek? I just can't say enough about her presence. The libero in the black jersey for Kentucky. Her presence on the floor completely changes an opponent's game plan. She is so good on first contact that teams do everything they can to keep it out of her hands. LSU, who we mentioned earlier, the one SEC team to push Kentucky to five, they did that partly because they were able to keep Ashley Dushek out of, out of the picture as much as possible. They served 40, 40 balls at Gabby Kerr. And I think Ashley Dushek passed about 15. So in serve receive, they did everything to stay away from her. And defensively, they swung away from her. Gabby Curry actually led the team in digs that night. And that's because teams are going to do everything they can to take her out. Lily Mack on the right side. Well, Darian Mack is pretty much a gator killer. Anytime that she's faced the Gators, she's put up solid numbers. She had a season-high 13 just a couple of weeks ago in Gainesville, playing on the right side. I have so much respect for this young lady. She came to Florida as a sophomore a couple of years ago as an outside hitter and led this team in kills. And then due to personnel changes and people they've brought in, she's been asked to change her role on this team. And I tell you what, she's done it with grace and with confidence and with a whole lot of ability as she's proven herself on the left and the right at 10 in this league. Valuable piece for the Wildcats, but right now they're trailing by five as Florida feeling mightily confident on the road here in Memorial Coliseum. Carly Snyder back to serve. And Florida didn't even wait to see how this one goes for Paige Hammonds across the front row. They, from the very beginning, have gone with Mia Sokolowski across the front row. So that was you know, determined pre-match. They're using her on the left side. And also notice how much they're using Shina Joseph on the right side. And as you mentioned, why would they not with the numbers? She has been on fire the last four matches. And they call on number five in the middle, Rachel Kramer. Kramer mentioned had 15 kills against Kentucky, but she's also coming off a terrific match against Mississippi State. Had no errors and 11 kills with a 733 hitting percentage. So both she and Ramat, the other middle blocker for the Gators, both with no error matches this season. Florida also doing a good job sending choice balls to the back row. They've got a senior in Carly Snyder who has experience. You know, she's playing the best volleyball she's played of her career. Why overload your outsides? A Mia Sokolowski out on the left antenna with a bump set. They're going to give that to Carly Snyder. What a great, job, what great job she does there. Florida playing for set point. But Leah Edmond extending this first set. 24-19 Gators. And Al Hassan hung in the air just a little bit and downs it. So the Gators take the first set 25 19. A nice little mix up there at the end by Al Hassan as she goes on the slide. We've said before we don't see this often from Al Hassan, but when she does it, it's successful. And with that, Florida is also successful in set one as they lead us 25 19.
You're watching the SEC on ESPN. A wonderful Wednesday primetime matchup between the fourth-ranked Florida Gators and number six Kentucky Gators took set number one. And Florida is 17-0 this season when winning the first set. When you look at just how that opening frame went, 344 the hitting percentage, holding, however, holding the Wildcats to just .029. Yeah, and I think what you see there is that Florida wins the offensive battle with 14 kills in the first meeting in Gainesville. Kentucky had 64 kills in that match to Florida's 46. Kentucky had a complete offensive onslaught that night. Florida in set one has been able to turn the tables. Well, college football on ABC Saturday will have number four Clemson and number 20 NC State at 3.30 Eastern. And then at 8 o'clock, it's 13th ranked Virginia Tech taking on undefeated Miami. Both of these games have big time ACC and college football playoff implications and both are also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Missy, when you look at the box score from the opening stanza, not only you see that hitting percentage, but also the side out percentage for Florida at 78%. Just Tell our viewers why that is so important in this rally scoring era. Well, Florida sides out at 78%, meaning when the other team is serving, they're able to side out off of that. Interestingly, Kentucky's number isn't bad. They side out at 60%. And what that tells me about these two teams is against opponents at this level, how hard it is to score off your own serve. You'll talk to teams about earning points. They'll say points the old school way before rally scoring. To earn points off your own serve is so difficult at this level of volleyball. And that's why those numbers are so high. Emily Franklin out of Mesa, Arizona on the serve. Monterey to Snyder. Snyder gets it in, took the angle, and it paid off. Carly Snyder, a two-time All-American. And the senior has just had an all-around game, but folks, she's got a wicked jump serve, you see there. And Edmund, you saw just how big her eyes were when she went up for that attack. That's the luxury of Aliyah Edmund, an All-American outside hitter. That was a bullet of a serve from Carly Snyder, an errant pass. Kentucky just swings at a ball up into left front. It's not even a good bump set, really. And Leah Edmund comes in and takes care of business. That is the luxury of having a high-flying, hard-hitting, relentless, fearless Leah Edmund. The Lexington native was the SEC Freshman of the Year a season ago, and the Gators grab a point right back and take a 3-2 lead. Rachel Kramer again, we said she was the most successful Florida Gator in the earlier meeting between these two teams at six foot eight. Rachel is able to hit from angles and positions that you just don't see every day in the gym, and she's so hard to defend. And it'll be interesting here if we see Craig Skinner kind of call on Leah Edmond a little bit more in this offense, number 13 in white, as again, she is a high attack. She is their main offensive threat, not the only, but the leading. And don't you think it just comes naturally when this team has their back against the wall, that they just naturally begin to throw balls to the outside and they just ride her. Sokolowski, there's Dushek with a great dig. And Avery Skinner. Sokolowski this time taking the tip shot somehow, knocked over by Kaz Brown. And Shina Joseph, when they needed her to terminate the ball, she has come through. Two big time swings from Sokolowski though. The second one being the tip right here that almost falls, but look at Leah Edmond laying out to keep it alive and then Kaz Brown with the one arm over the net and then Florida is able to switch directions to set against the flow. Everything's happening in right and in left front. They go the opposite direction and open things up. 
Our producer, Trevor Toll, talked about the secretaries of defense and Cheyenne Husky and Ramat Al-Hassan. And once more, you see the 6'4 senior Al-Hassan in the middle. She's just four blocks away from that all-time record at Florida. A really nice swing there by Kaz Brown. That was wicked. That one's just wide as Carolyn Canope does a good job of getting her line or her foot right on the line so she knows anything over that left shoulder is out of bounds. But what a nice swing by Kaz. We've already talked about Ashley Dushek and just how awesome of a libero she is. She told me earlier before the match just how important it was for her to be able to show everyone that you have to earn this jersey and why she's able to earn and wear the different color jersey. And she's talked with, you know, Stephanie Cleefoot and Jackie Knapper, and they said one of the things was just own the court and be yourself. And that's how you can become a successful or as successful as she is, and she's done a great job of it. Ramat Al Hassan on the slide. Ramat now in her fourth and final season as a senior has really begun to develop the slide play. It's the one thing that maybe had separated Florida from some of the elite teams in the country and that both of their middle blockers, don't get me wrong, are very elite, but just a wrinkle in their offense is that they didn't have a middle blocker real comfortable behind the setter. And here in the second half of the SEC season, we see Ramat accomplishing that. How about Emily, Emily Franklin? She looks pretty comfortable behind the setter. She's a fifth year senior who can really do it all. Just has one of the most well-rounded games in the country. She has hit 500 plus in 10 matches this season. Huge numbers, but it's really what you expect from a fifth year senior, just playing smart. She's 10th in the country with a 429 hitting efficiency. That's second in the entire league. You know, they, they've got that combo. Kaz Brown, Emily Franklin, two very different players and two extremely elite middle blockers. Again, you mentioned on both sides, the middle blockers in the top 10 for hitting percentage in the SEC. We actually have in this match, five of the top 10 players in the conference in terms of hitting efficiency. The two middle blockers for Florida, the middle blockers for Kentucky, and then along with them, Shina Joseph right now at seventh in the conference. And Kramer off the mark there, but again, she led the conference last year in hitting percentage, and once more, she is atop the leaderboard, if you will, for that hitting efficiency. 451 for Rachel Kramer. Kentucky and the Gators have a lockdown on that efficiency. The celebration for Gabby Curry, the service ace. And right there to anticipate it. Leah Edmonds says, I got it. Wildcats on a 4-0 run with the stuff from Edmond. Edmond has no attacker here. So she does a great job of coming over and fronting the setter. It's exactly where she's supposed to be. Really not great timing on Husky's part. She's going to be more successful with that in transition when her blocker has sort of lost sight of her. But Leah Edmond right where she was supposed to be. I'm just loving it all these exciting plays. I mean, everyone is stepping up and exactly what you would expect when number four and number six in the country meet. Edmund with the hot hand, going from zero to 100 real quick. Mary Wise said it's gonna take an all out team effort to slow down this Kentucky offense. It's gonna take an all out team effort to slow down Leah Edmund. And you understand why when you see her take a rip at the ball, I mean, you don't have a chance at digging that if your block isn't set up exactly right and hopefully getting a little piece of it. Kaz Brown, I got energy, got a lot of energy. 12-9, Kentucky with the lead. And just a reminder, folks, what's at stake? 
The RPI in postseason standings. Kentucky number one in the SEC. Florida trying to grab a clab, claim, grab a claim, but that's fine. Florida took the first set, 25-19. The Wildcats trying to answer here in the second stanza. They lead by three with Emily Franklin on the serve. Missy Whittemore, Tiffany Green here with you from Lexington, Kentucky. Shina Joseph has had the hot hand as of late. They continue to feed number 15. Shina Joseph gets her second kill in this set alone but when you look at the numbers from this set alone Kentucky hitting a whopping 455 after that brutal 029 in the first set they have turned it around thanks to the likes of Kaz Brown and her signature one foot takeoff there in front of the setter something she has always done well she's just gotten more powerful over the course of her career if that's possible Kaz Brown one of the captains on this team an all SEC performer And Kramer comes right back the middle to middle. Nice pass for Florida, really gives them three options. And because of that, Kentucky has to defend every attacker. They're not able to get two blockers up against that. That's why that first pass is so important. would just call on Shiner Joseph and she is there. That was an out of system play for the Gators and yet they were still able to get the point out of it. They're down by one. Shiner, a fifth year senior, her story so resembles that of Darian Mack, who's playing right side this year for Kentucky and that they both played multiple positions for their teams. And here in their final season, it's nice to see them really elevate their game and play so well, both of them on the right side. Kowalski on the attack here. That point goes to Florida. Joseph swung right into the hands of the Kentucky block, tooled it and Point Gators. Shine has been so good that when Kentucky gets a piece of that, you hear a big cheer from the fans here, but it's off of that Kentucky block out of bounds, so yet another kill for Shine and Joseph. The overpass right there is Ashley Dushek. Come in and save the point so far and keep the rally going. Here's Carly Snyder, now Mackenzie Watson, the overpass. How about it? The block this time gets it to go inbounds, Cass Brown right there. 
And Florida has a couple missed opportunities in this one as there were two overpasses. And anytime there's an overpass at this level, you've got to capitalize on that. That's one you have to convert to a point. You can't give that ball back to Kentucky with the level of offense that they're running. Al Hassan on the slide and the kill. And that one of the more impressive slides I've seen from Ramad, who is looking more and more comfortable on that play because she had to make some adjustment in the air there, and that can be really difficult to do, but she's running that like she's a pro. Well, she has USA Volleyball experience, played with the senior national team, and right there, plays like that, taking advantage of all 6-4 of her and that Long wingspan to go along with it. Well, we said moments ago there was a missed opportunity with the overpass because she didn't do that on the prior play or two plays ago. She kind of just tapped it back at him. That time, no question, that one's going to get to the ground. Both Dushek and Watson going for it. Couldn't get to it in time, so Florida now on top. Credit Allie Gregory, though, for Florida and right back, making a beautiful dig there. The defensive players on both sides of the net putting some work in. Interestingly enough, we, we talked about how good these teams are offensively and defensively. When you look at Kentucky this season, they are known, their staple is defense. But they have also really kind of rounded out offensively as well. Yeah, they're number four in the nation, Kentucky, this year with a 329 hitting efficiency, fifth in kills per set. And flip that, Florida, who's typically known for their offense, is actually third in the country in opponent, opponent hitting efficiency, which is a real good reflection of your defense. Here's Kentucky's offense, as we just mentioned moments ago. Huge numbers. Those are NCAA ranks, folks. So that's across the entire country, the third highest opponent hitting efficiency for Florida as we take a look at their defense as compared to the Kentucky offense. And if you've followed SEC Volleyball over the years, this is a kind of an interesting comparison in that typically we're talking Kentucky defense and Florida offense. So some role reversal here this year. They've been top 25 the last couple of seasons. And don't forget, folks, again, tonight the NCAA Volleyball Committee will reveal their first top 10 and that will be during our match later tonight between number three, Texas and Kansas State. That's at nine Eastern or just there about right here. But you see the other important dates to be aware of the selection special and then the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament kickoff on November 30th. And we talk about what's at stake in this match and we've talked about postseason. It's particularly that regional date. That's the one we're circling. That is not a predetermined site, a win for one of these teams could possibly put them in a really good position to be a host for that regional site. That's your round of 16 and your round of eight. Those are huge matches to play on your home court. Conversely, I think it's safe to say that whoever loses tonight likely eliminates themselves from contention of being able to be one of those four host sites. Husky back out to Snyder once more. Right there is Madison Lilly out of system. Bump set from Duchesne. And how about the senior, Carly Snyder, right there. Carly, a really smart rally from her. And she had two hard balls to swing at, and she was just patient. The RPI postseason seeding at stake. We just mentioned a little bit about the opportunity to potentially host a regional. Not only that, first place standing in the SEC can Kentucky hold it outright, or will Florida get a share of it? Florida shared it just a season ago with Mizzou, but it's been since 1988 that Kentucky has won the SEC crown. So we see a delay in play, and a challenge has been issued on the court, checking to see if there was a net violation that is, of course, one of the four things that can be challenged, the net violation, and that would be they're questioning whether or not Carly Snyder on that tap back was in the net. As we get another look at this, Carly lands, goes back up, and taps it over. 
And the question here is probably going to be whether it's Carly that's in the net or perhaps the ball that gets a little piece of the tape. And because I think that's going to be a hard question to answer, I'm just not sure that it's going to be evidence to overturn that. And so the, so the call stands on the floor. Florida with the point. That is Mike Hamilton. The second referee as Al Hassan is back to serve it. Darian Mack on the attack and got it to go off the hands of the Florida block. And we mentioned earlier that Darian Mack has played multiple positions over her career at Kentucky. And what that allows Kentucky to do is to set her at the left pin in serve receive. There's so many right side attackers that are not comfortable swinging from the left pin, but because of Darian's experience, the fact that she's played multiple positions, I'll tell you, we got to see them in like a warm up situation earlier, taking swings at it. And the deadliest swings in that drill were coming from Darian Mack. She was putting some heat on the ball. She's got a powerful arm swing once again, saved by the company of Dushek Curry and Dushek once again. Carly Snyder annihilates it. The moon ball sent back from Kentucky as Florida really had to wait for that one. And because of that, it was not a perfect pass. They really took their middle blocker out of the attack with that pass. Put some pressure on Carly Snyder and she delivered. Monterey to Snyder. Snyder right into the block off the Kentucky hands. Once again, though, it's the team effort by Florida to slow down this Kentucky offense and that Kramer and Shina Joseph just touched. Got a piece of that swing from Leah Edmond, and that allowed them to defend. And Kramer is right there. So now Florida trying to seize control of this second set and take a 2-0 lead on the road. Kentucky takes a timeout as Rachel Kramer once again right there. Patrolling that net, and we've seen several tight balls pass tight to the net. It's because there's so much speed and power on the offensive swings and really from the service line as well. And so these passers have had a hard time keeping balls off the net. We've seen several calls of the setters in the net or overpasses. Well, you see the stature that Rachel Kramer has when she's on the court. We mentioned the tallest player in UF volleyball history standing at a proud 6'8". And not too long ago, she ran into a young lady by the name of Isabel Donahue, who was 4'8", an Alabama cheerleader. And if you compare the two-foot differential between the two, you see Manute Bowl and Muggsy Bowes on the right tallest and shortest players in NBA history. The new ball was 7-7, Muggsy Bogues at 5-3, and the video just went viral. And here's what Rachel Kramer had to say about her newfound fame. I'm really surprised, because I always take photos like that after the match, with like little girls that come up with me, and like, I always think like they post a ton of them, I get tagged in a lot of them. So everyone was like, oh, this is a funny photo. I mean, it's of the Alabama cheerleader, but I didn't really think like, oh, this is the photo that's gonna get attention. I love it. She was like, oh, this is the one? <laughs> and not only that, she mentioned that it was Isabel Donahue who got like a thousand followers from that. But she said she didn't even tag me. Yeah, in she it. said, where's the love? She didn't <laughs> even tag me. Isabel's got like a thousand new followers. What about me? But wow, <laughs> she really take it. She takes it in stride. She embraces her height. Um, comes from a very tall family. She said her dad always had people coming up to him and asking him about his height. He was friendly and just talked to people. But she's actually the first Division I athlete in her family. So the first one to use her height in an athletic way. Mom, six foot even. Dad, six eight. And she says, I never thought it was anything special or different. Exactly. I, I was never made to feel that way. And I love that about her parents. Mm -hmm. They're continuing to call on Carly Snyder, and Snyder now with double-digit kills, hitting at an even 500 for the match. Leah Edmond is second in the league in points per set, but Carly Snyder is sixth in the SEC in points per set, and she's showing us why tonight. Getting it done in left front, as well as from the service line, she's the one who leads the league, actually, in services. 
and she had a quiet 10 kills in that first match against the Wildcats back in October. <laughs> Leah Edmonds said, all right, enough of this. She's infusing energy as she tools the block and demonstrative after that one. Fearless. There are so many players in the country who are on a ping pong play like that just couldn't gather themselves mentally to take a strong rip at the ball and maybe wouldn't be confident enough. She just like goes ahead and rips at it in a completely out of system situation. Now in system, passed across the court and just out of bounds. The point goes to Florida. And maybe not by design on the part of Florida that I think a couple people took swings and just missed at it. So lucky for them, that one sails long. Just outside the boundary line. Canope, Monterey, Sokolowski. And Kaz Brown, number seven in white. That's their intrepid leader. And for a player who's just been reinserted into the lineup, it is a tall order to swing against Kaz Brown. But right now she's got the smaller setter in Madison Lilly in right front. And if they can push it out to the line, I think she could have some success swinging down the line. And a chance where you're two points down. Again, the first to 25. Every point seems to get the smaller and smaller and more and more important, though, as you go from 20 to 25. And the Gators now just two points away from taking a 2-0 lead here in this key SEC match from Lexington. The dive to keep it alive from McKenzie Watson, the tip, and how about Allie Gregory, number 14, and Black on the other side. Edmund takes a rip from the back row. Carly Snyder, Woo! this is great stuff, folks. Wow. And set point for the Florida Gators. And Kentucky does not always leave Leah Edmond in across the back row, but notice she's back there at this point in the match after she's third. And it serves them well in that she took that huge back row swing. Florida somehow defends it. The setters dump second contact from Madison Lillard. Wow, that takes some guts. This is not an offensive setter necessarily. She doesn't do that a lot. This is Florida, the set point freshman setter, and she is not afraid. Gators still with set point. Chance here, Al Hassan gets it over. Lily feeds Skinner. The tip. And Sokolowski with the attack error. So now Kentucky within two. And Kentucky couldn't believe it. Fans going nuts as they felt like the attack from Al Hassan went into the net and that it was four, five, six contacts on Florida when they sent that ball over. So Mary Wise. And the Gators talking it over as they take a timeout on the court. So college football on ABC Saturday. We'll have Clemson and NC State at 3.30 Eastern. Presented by Kane. And then at 8, it's Virginia Tech, the 13th-ranked Hokies, taking on the 10th-ranked Miami Hurricanes. Both of these games have big-time ACC and college football implications, and both are streaming live on the ESPN app. Hurricanes still undefeated. Not Well, for the Gators, they were undefeated when they last met Kentucky on October 15th. They spent three weeks at number one. We caught up with Ramon Al-Hassan earlier to see a little bit about how she feels about this match. I remember, I know my sophomore year, so two years ago, that we played them at home first and then came back and played them here. So, you know, like, second time, you know, being able to, like, all right, cool. Like, we got them, we played them once, like, they did whatever they came in and did and knowing that, like, they beat us in our home court, we're going to come back and do the same thing. I'm super excited. I've never played here before. We didn't play here last year. This is my first time here. So I'm super excited to see the crowd and kind of feel it out. SEC road matches are always fun. They always have great crowds. The SEC, so I can't wait. Well, 
Ramon Al Hassan, second in program history in career blocks, right behind Benavia Jenkins. But she is not too far off from taking over that top spot. She's got four blocks here tonight. Florida still with set point. Ashley Dushek on the serve. And Brooke Morgan recently inserted into the match out of the timeout. And how about Brooke Morgan taking it, the overpass. And Brooke Morgan has been inserted into the lineup to play on the left side. We know her as a right side player, but what that does is puts a huge block across the net over there in right front. The joust at the net. The free ball over from Kentucky. A golden opportunity for the Gators, and Al Hassan ends it. Florida keeps Ali Monsray in the front row as a setter. She's able to create a connection there with a Ramad Al Hassan, even though Kentucky had inserted Brooke Morgan in left front to try to defend that. Florida still capitalizes on the slide play. The Gators calling on their seniors, and Ramad Al Hassan coming through. Gators on top, two nothing. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Florida on the road and one set away from closing out the sixth ranked team in the country. The Gators have looked sharp thus far behind Ramon al Hassan and Rachel Kramer. And what they've been able to do this season is really stifle opponents. And you take a look at the hitting percentage from the opponents, ranked opponents that is. Yeah. They have done more than their job. Yeah, Kentucky, the only team to have really a respectable, a ranked team to have that respectable hitting percentage against Florida. But tonight, Florida doing a much better job defensively, holding them to half of what they were in that first meeting as after two sets, they sit at 152. Florida and Nebraska, you know, are the only two teams in the country to have two wins over opponents who are in the top six, either in the ABCA poll or in our RPI. So if Florida, were to beat Kentucky tonight, they would be the only team to have three wins over teams in the top six in the entire country. That's really impressive it considering is. the type of uh, opponents they faced this season. Number one, Texas, who was the preseason number one. They took care of them in the Burt Challenge. The next night, <laughs> they handled number five, Nebraska. They faced off against UNC, was ranked at the time. 
Florida State as well. And what a difference a year makes because in 2016, Florida was one in three against ranked opponents. This year, they're four and one, and somehow that number will change tonight for the good or the bad. And counted in for Leah Edmond. Out of the gates. And just because Kentucky is down 0-2, do not count them out. This team plays with so much confidence. And just a week ago, they were at LSU, and they were in the same position, on not on their home court, but at LSU, and they were able to come back in five and make, take a win out of that. And they said, we need to be in those positions. That's what Coach Skinner said. We need to know what that feels like. And he said, every time you're able to come from behind on the road to have a win like that, it adds another layer of confidence. And I think layer is definitely the right word with this team because they've already got a lot of confidence the way this group plays, but it's just another layer of confidence. And one of the things from the savvy seniors in Darian Mack for the Wildcats talked about, you know, in the huddle, we just had to find a way to embrace the challenge. We found, we found ourselves in those situations in practice. So now that it's match time, it should be no different. We are ready to, to step up to it. Yeah, I love that she said we have to embrace the challenge. They don't shy away from those hard moments. This team really lives for those hard moments. And as for the Florida Gators, they have a chance to grab hold to a share of the lead in the SEC if they can close out the Wildcats in three, but not so fast, says Leah Edmond. And Leah Edmond, the new uh, move here in set three is twice we've seen her go deep into the corner. So not the high-flying hard hit ball that we're used to seeing from her, but it's a kill nonetheless. And she had a couple errors. She's trying to flush that, move on to the next point. Something that the staff here at Kentucky says has really impressed them about this group is their ability to move on to the next point. Not to dwell in the past, but to really flush it. Meanwhile, you can't stop talking about the redshirt senior in Shina Joseph. Out of Ontario, Canada, had 13 kills twice in the last four matches. She's got nine here tonight. And we talk about a lot of the players on both sides of the net being involved in the USA national team program. Shina has been involved in the Canadian national team program. Her first language is actually French. Her dad is a retired Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officer. I love that. <laughs> when I think of Mounted Police Officer, I think of the movie Me, Myself, and Irene. I know. That's random. But they had Mounted Police Patrol there. And we see another overpass. We've seen it from both teams. And it says a lot about the power that these players are bringing from the service line. And that it's, you know, it's coming off the arms and sailing so tight to the net, they're having trouble controlling it. So Kentucky starting out this third set. much like they did the second set. Got off to a quick start. And the serving error, and Leah Edmond has had some troubles behind the service line tonight. She's very aggressive back there, and I don't think as a coach you want to take that from her. She has the ability to go back and run points, and with that, you're gonna have some errors. But I think that you gotta go ahead and let her swing away because she also has the ability to run those strings of points. And it is so hard, as we mentioned earlier, to score off of your own serve unless you're willing to take some risks. Now Kentucky trying something a little different as they've inserted Anna Nyberg into the lineup on the outside. And she takes not one, not two, but three swings. Florida slows her down, slows her down, and finally the stuff block on the right side from guess who? Cheyenne Husky and Ramad Al Hassan. It's just what they do. It is. A good slow down on the block again as they get it just a piece of that Kaz Brown swing. It looks like something they're going to be able to transition offensively, but an error there on the left side. Now 
Al Hassan with the tip, and she is added to her offensive arsenal. She's really grown as an attacker. Good shot here. And that ball set too low, not something she can take a swing at. So a wise decision to tip it, but she doesn't give up on it. A really smart tip right over the block. She still scores a point. A tough serve and an ace for Paige Hammonds. Paige Hammonds, we saw this in earlier today in practice, a really, really tough serve. And along with that, she's played a great back row for Florida. They're limiting her role tonight. But what she does really well, and Coach Wise said what got what she what she was told in the recruiting process is that what gets you to the floor quickest is your ball control ability. And she said Paige really took that to heart, that she played middle blocker in high school, but even as a middle blocker, she really focused on that ball control and was able to win herself a spot right away because of it. The freshman at Florida was Miss volleyball here in Kentucky and answering right back with an ace of her own is Madison Lilly. Well Lilly who is certainly in the running for the SEC setter of the year and perhaps freshman of the year as well. Very serious Player. She's the same always, but she delivers the ball so beautifully. And Leah Edmonds says, thank you. And this crowd is making some noise, trying to, trying to will these Wildcats to a victory here in the third set. And Leah Edmonds as well, giving it everything she's got as we continue to see some back row offense from her. You don't see a lot of that. She's got a dozen kills tonight and Carly Snyder is in double figures as well. She leads the Gators with 11. She's got no errors on tonight. So a clean match thus far for the Senior All-American. Franklin took a rip at it. Allie Gregory right there pushed over by Hammonds. Darian Mack from the left pin. And they tried to converge, not in time. And Mary Wise just is beside herself with that last call. Kentucky is credited with the point. And she's having a conversation with the second referee in Mike Hamilton. And if Florida is called over the net here, realize that is not something that Florida can challenge. And so that is why we don't see the challenge card here. That is not on our list of challengeable calls, but obviously you can see from the look on Coach Wise's face, she is not in agreement with that one. Kept in play, free ball over from Curry. Good opportunity for the Gators and Snyder delivers the point for Florida. Two nice sets there from Cheyenne Husky to the outside. Realize Cheyenne Husky setting for this Florida Gator team. This is only her second season as she's now a sophomore at Florida that she's played the setting position full time. She did not set for her high school team, not even a lot for her club team. And you can see why when you see her block and the ability that she has. She has a lot less reps, though, in terms of setting. And so her setting game has really come along. Well, Monterey, who just set up Joseph right there. Kramer with the beautiful golden opportunity and misses it right there. And Kramer wishes she could have that one back. Those are tougher than they look, folks. They hang in the air for a while. You have just a little too much time to think about it. Often you jump a little early on those. And those are difficult. And Edmund tried to go with the deep pocket. And a touch is overruled by the line judge and Mary Wise quickly pulls out the green card saying that she wants to challenge it. And notice Shina Joseph ran to the sideline and said no, hold the card, I did touch it. 
So there are times where you can't see from the bench, and they really rely on their players to be honest about that, because in a match like this, you don't want to waste the green card. So Shina tells them, hold the card. I touched it. So no challenge by Florida, but a timeout taken by the Gators. So Mary Wise talking it over with her group. It's 13-9, Wildcats with the lead. Missy Whittemore, Tiffany Green here with you from Memorial Coliseum in Lexington, Kentucky. The top ranked team in the SEC, Wildcats. Down two sets to none to the Florida Gators. It's just the fourth time in SEC history. Two teams ranked in the top 10 from the league are meeting. Wasn't pretty that time. Florida never was able to really get an offensive look there, but they win it with blocking. You know, in 10, they've had 10 plus blocks, double digit blocks in 16 of 18 matches. Really incredible. They're fourth in the nation in blocks per set, giving all that she has was Ali Monterey to keep that one in play. Florida not able to come up with the point, but great effort from number 22 in black. And both of these teams are so good that I love the fact that they're choosing to play clean and that they're choosing to give their, their team another chance. You know, that they've used the tip shot wisely this evening. They've extended rallies. When you've got an offense like Florida or Kentucky, why not extend the rally? Dushek coming up with a couple of big digs. Here's Joseph. Joseph. Shana Joseph is just so tough. Double digit kills for Joseph. And we just mentioned, folks, that this is just the fourth time <laughs> that two top 10 teams in the SEC are meeting. You see the other three, Florida, involved in all, all four of these matches. I think it tells you something about the state of volleyball in the league this season and just how well these two teams are playing that they are definitely part of the national conversation. Twice this season they have met and certainly they are bringing more eyes and attention to the Southeastern Conference. After that first meeting between these two teams, Mary Wise said, we've ID'd some areas that we think were deficiencies in that first meeting, and now we get a chance to see where we are. And this is a foreshadowing of a postseason type match, but our season isn't on the line. So we can come out and play loose, and one of those areas they wanted to improve was attacking from the right side and scoring points from the right side. You have someone powerful and high-flying like Shina Joseph. They needed to improve that connection. And I would say they've passed that test so far. Both of these teams made it to the NCAA tournament, and each took some early exits in the second round. Certainly they're looking to improve on that this year. Unless anything changes, then we're definitely gonna see these two teams 
come November and perhaps December. Disappointing exits for both of those teams. And so I think they've both worked hard in the offseason and they have that in the back of their mind. But you've got to be deep to go far into the postseason. And Mia Sokolowski on the floor right now, Anna Nyberg on the floor right now for Kentucky. This is the depth of those benches in action. And not only is she on the floor, but on cue, Mia Sokolowski making me look good with a big swing down the line right there. So the big swing from the freshman Sokolowski causes Kentucky to take a timeout as the Gators trailing by just one. And you would think, Missy, that in these previous meetings, whoever has home court advantage would be the team to perhaps have the advantage. Not so much. The home cooking doesn't necessarily work. You flash back to last season at the Limerin Center at Florida, and it was Kentucky who not only dominated, but swept the Gators, who were in the top five at the time. And then just 17 days ago, once again, it was all Kentucky. In Gainesville again earlier this season, and it was Kentucky who showed up and took the crowd out of it. That gym was dead. They, Florida was able to push them before, but really Kentucky controlled that match. And interestingly, if you go back to when these senior classes were freshmen, just back to 2014, Kaz Brown and the Wildcats have never beat Florida on their home court, but they've never lost a match in Gainesville. So for Ramad Al-Hassan, she's had all kinds of success here in Lexington, but she's never won a match on her, on her home court against Lexington. So the not so home court in that advantage when it comes to this one, we'll see if Florida can hold that trend true. They would have to win this one tonight. And you know that this senior class for Kentucky whose goal has been to set new norms for this program. And they have done that for sure. That one of those goals along the way is that new norm is that they defend their home court against the Florida Gators. And they are perfect here at Memorial Coliseum this season for Ramon Al Hassan. Remember, the Gators spent three weeks at number one, and it wasn't until Kentucky came on their home floor and knocked them out of that top spot. Notice both of these outside hitters with limited playing time over the course of the season coming in and performing. You got to like that. And that's when you realize how hard these teams work during the week in their own gyms. I've had players from Kentucky say, our hardest matches are during the week when we have to fight against each other. There's so much competition in our gym. That was a tough one for Al Hassan to handle. Just his time there in Kentucky with the point 17-14. Wildcats on top. Craig Skinner said his Kentucky team has impressed the him with how much they want something else. He said something beyond what they've done before. And you see it in the way they play right now. Down 0-2, and they are still coming at you. They so want to elevate this program to the next level. And looking at the rankings from this year, they have. They're one of those few teams who every week they have either stayed steady or climbed in the rankings. Really incredible season. 18 straight weeks ranked, and this is the highest ranking at number six under Craig Skinner. They've won 14 matches dating back to September 9th, but you think about this Florida team and their program under Mary Wise, a legendary coach who has owned the SEC, the perennial power from the Southeastern Conference, they are the big dog, the ones that each year you say, if we can take down Florida, <laughs> you know, that's a yeah. big feather in our cap. There's so many things you can look at in terms of tournament appearances, semifinal appearances, and all the accolades. But I think one of my favorites I saw in their notes is that in terms of AVCA top 15 finishes at the end of the season since 1991 when Mary Wise came to Florida, Florida is tied for second with Stanford only behind Nebraska. And let's go back to Allie Gregory and that wonderful save. The defense again that we have seen, she laid out, kept it alive, and then Al Hassan and Husky at the net to give Florida the point and tie it up at 17 all. And you, when you return home to Kentucky for the first time, as for Paige Hammonds and Allie Gregory, there can be a lot of nerves. And sometimes that's not a good match for those players. But these two have really come out and they've competed here in Kentucky and it's kind of brought out the best in them. Al 
Hassan once again. Just that bright smile that she has. And Cheyenne Husky has a nice connection with her. When Cheyenne goes up high, gets it, and isn't afraid to set her high. People are afraid they're going to miss because you set her so high. But if you let her go up and get it, she's unstoppable. Net violation called on Kentucky. And as Ramat Al-Hassan back to serve, she is tied. The all-time career blocks with Benavia Jenkins. One more, and she will have it outright. And she's already a member of the rare 1,500 club, and that's 1,000 career kills and 500 career blocks. That's pretty impressive company. She's not an All-American three times over for nothing. Ramon Alasan out of Glen Arden, Maryland. Coach Wise talked about just how her international play has helped to form a pro mindset for her. And once again, Carly Snyder playing airless volleyball. Another attack, and it's good for 15. Go up and get it, swing high, swing for the corners. There is no defense for the deep corner. The Gators with an opportunity to sweep the sixth ranked team in the country on their home floor. A grab a share of that SEC lead with Kentucky. If they can win out this third set. Again, remember folks, also a chance to perhaps host a regional. If they win this win, as Florida is number five in the RPI, Kentucky number three, and that's one of the considerations that the committee has. Setting up Kramer in the middle. And it dribbles down the net, Rachel Kramer. Kramer and Mia Sokolowski both let that overpass go. Neither one of them comfortable taking a swing at it. It really ends up being a good decision as they're able to run a comfortable offense. In Florida, three points away from getting a huge road win here in the SEC and avenging that loss last month against Kentucky as they are on an 8-3 run. Ramat Al-Hassan has been all over the court tonight. Nine kills, but she's got seven blocks to go along with it. You don't want to come her way at the net. No, she not only leads the Southeastern Conference, folks, she's number one in the nation with 1.7 blocks per set. That's not over the course of a match. And when we talk about those blocks, these are the stuff blocks that end a rally. Think of the number of times that she and Cheyenne Husky have blocked balls back at Kentucky that have extended a rally. So it says a lot for how hard those girls work over the course of a long rally, the middle blockers on both sides of this net. Just from side to side, antenna to antenna, they're roaming that net blocking and then always getting off the net and available offensively in transition. I mean, just elite level play at the net tonight. Ramon Al-Hassan, one of the five seniors for this Florida team. Well, if you remember last Saturday, it was a remarkable win for Ohio State over Penn State. JT Barrett led the sixth-ranked Buckeyes, and they're hoping to do it again against Iowa at Kinnick Stadium Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. Out to Brooke Morgan. Here's Monterey setting up Joseph. Nice dig there from Gabby Curry. And Leah Edmonds. I love after both of these teams 
get a kill or a big block. Just how they erupt. They enjoy it. They enjoy it. It's so much fun to watch these two teams. And how great is it that on a night where you have two elite level teams playing, we're getting big play from the big players. They're stepping up. They're carrying these teams. They're doing just what you would hope. Shana Joseph on the other side. And boy, she has just played terrific tonight. Shina had to wait her turn to play at the right side where she's most comfortable. Alex Holston has been a fixture at that right side and for good reason, one of the most talented players ever in the Southeastern Conference. But Shina had to play out of position and finally now as a fifth year senior, you see how good she is. 11 kills for Joseph, goes up once again, make it 12. And that's just another level. I mean, that is just another speed and another level that we haven't even seen from Shiny Joseph. Match point, Florida. The fourth ranked Gators. Trying to get a little revenge from a couple weeks back. Edmund going up. Mia Sokolowski early in that rally got pulled in and did not release on time. There was absolutely no block up against Kaz Brown. Carolyn Canope digs one right out of her lap to keep that thing alive. Eventually, of course, Kentucky converts. But wow, the defensive play we've seen, it's, it's all we had hoped for. And Nyberg, and how about Mary Wise jumping off the bench, feeling good. The fourth ranked Florida Gators come on Kentucky's home floor and sweep the sixth ranked Wildcats. They said this was a measuring stick. We can see where we were from just a few short weeks ago. They said we've worked hard in two weeks and we had the opportunity to put ourselves in a postseason type situation on display. For Florida, they have senior Carolyn Cano. In her, you have such a talented, pure athlete. She actually played outside hitter at Michigan for a couple years before transferring to the Gators to play the libero position full time. She's second in the league with 4.6 digs per set. She has a great ability to read hitters and a fiery personality that feeds this team. For Kentucky, another senior, Ashley Dusek, is the two-time reigning SEC libero of the year. She was out earlier this year with injury, and since she's returned to that libero jersey, she has put up double-digit digs in every match. And in fact, in that run, Kentucky is undefeated with Ashley Dusek at libero. Not to mention the fact that we're going to have a little game of keep away going on within these matches. Both opponents try to limit the touches for these two talented liberos. Well, both of these liberos, top 10 in the SEC, Canopa, all SEC selection last year. And you want to know what's at stake? Not only first place positioning in the SEC, but also postseason implications on the line here as the RPI numbers are out and three and five are Kentucky and Florida respectively and a chance to potentially host a regional. Underway here and good crowd on here, hand here this Wednesday night. Leah Edmond going up from the left pin. Here's Ali Monterey and 15, China, China Joseph. She was denied. Mary Wise, the leading lady for the Florida Gators and She's chasing 900 victories, and her team thus far has done a great job. Ever since that October 15th loss to Kentucky, they've won four straight. They've beaten three teams by a sweep. So they are looking mightily strong, especially with number five, Rachel Kramer, in the middle. On the other side, there's Craig Skinner in his 13th year, and the highest ranking in the Skinner era at number six in the country. And boy, he's done a terrific job. And this could be the year for Kentucky. He feels like this group is very mature and a calm presence. They're able to battle back and fight through. So Kentucky gets the point. And 
that time the ball appears to stay along. Neither line judge calls a touch, but the up official that play is right in front of him, and he overrules them with the touch call. Leah Edmonds said coming into this one, it would be huge to swing high off of hands, and we've seen a couple of those swings already. Brian Himmelgarn and Mike Hamilton. The three, one, and two. Or up and down, as you may know. Try to get saved, and a wonderful effort by Gabby Curry, and somehow McKenzie Watson gets it over. Shia Joseph says, it ends now. We talked about the defense in this match tonight. We said we could have defensive fireworks that could outshine or at least match the offense of these two teams. And you're getting a look at why. In this rotation, Kentucky has three defensive specialists across the back row, along with their libero, McKenzie Watson and Gabby Curry, also on the court. They are going to keep balls alive. And Leah Edmond handles the bump set from Madison Lilly, their spectacular freshman setter. And Edmond, who had 19 kills in their first meeting, continuing on. She fires away into left back on that one. Right near Canope, who's not able to make a play on it. Canope only had six digs in the earlier meeting between these two teams. Well, it's been an interesting series, to say the least, when these two teams meet up. 64th overall, Kentucky won the last one back on October 15th, and actually they've won three of the last four. However, Florida has controlled it historically. Allie Gregory able to get that one to just bounce in. So thanks to the net, a service ace in Florida with the 4-3 lead. And Allie Gregory is a Louisville native, but as a sophomore did not play here in Kentucky a season ago. They only played in Gainesville, so this is her first trip back to her home state. Sometimes you wonder, are there nerves there or is there excitement? Mia Sokolowski, number nine on the left side, and Sokolowski, we're getting to see her again. We didn't see her uh, for a little bit because of uh, some changes in the rotation, but she's coming in and making a strong impact. Sokolowski started the season splitting time with Paige Hammonds. Paige Hammonds, a freshman outside hitter, going across the back row, and Sokolowski across the front row in a couple huge wins for Florida over Texas and Nebraska. Paige Hammonds won that front row spot and had played all six rotations, but tonight we're seeing them go with Sokolowski. She just had a good outing at Mississippi State where she had four kills on six attempts. And Florida doubles their lead thanks to Al Hassan, one of the best in the middle. Al Hassan leading the league in the nation in blocks per set, and this team is fourth in the nation in blocks per set with over three blocks in a single set. That's not in a match, folks. Those are huge numbers if you don't follow volleyball. Three stuffed blocks in a set is really amazing. And she's seven away from the all-time leader in Florida as the Gators are now on a 4-0 run. Skinner able to hit them where they, they ain't. And this is a little bit of gamesmanship here as you saw Cheyenne Husky for Florida go with a deep tip shot on second contact. Kentucky comes back at him. Avery Skinner, the deep tip shot, she finds the hole. Nice heads up play by the freshman out of Katy, Texas as her fellow Texan, Ashley Dushek on the serve. Watson, Lily, Franklin. That hits the antenna. That means it's out of play, so the point goes to Florida. Lily Franklin, fifth year senior for the Wildcats. This is a nice choice in transition. As you see, the Florida block does not close there, so they dodge a bullet that time as Franklin hits the antenna. Something Emily Franklin talked about before this match is that they have a goal to get six transition kills, or excuse me, seven in each set. So that's something they're very aware of is working hard in transition. And right now, Florida opening up in this first set looking very composed and calm as they've been playing some excellent volleyball as of late. And you see there as Paige Hammond serves another Louisville native. So a freshman returning to her home state for the first time as well. The lead is now out to five, and Craig Skinner decides to call a timeout. The fourth-ranked Florida Gators on the road here in Lexington and looking sharp early.
fresh off their remarkable comeback win over Penn State, JT Baird and the sixth ranked Ohio State Buckeyes battle Iowa at Kinnick Stadium Saturday at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. Florida out the gates pretty quickly as they're on a 6-1 run and what they've done thus far, Missy, is kind of take this crowd out of it just for the time being. Well, we saw this happen in Gainesville. Kentucky came in and did the exact same thing. It's early, but Kentucky already has four attack errors and is hitting negative numbers. We saw them recently at LSU in the first two sets. They were down 0-2. LSU is the only SEC team to push them to five, and a lot of that had to do with Kentucky errors early in the match. Well, Al Hassan just better offense there as Al Hassan averaging almost three kills per set. She's gotten stronger and stronger as three-time All-American has boosted her play in SEC. And Skinner with the spin off the net and gets it to drop. Skinner, only a freshman, is 10th in this league in kills per set. And with the combination of Skinner and, of course, Leah Edmond opposite her on the left side, you feel like Kentucky could maybe boast the best combo of outside hitters in this league. They never have a down rotation at that left pin. She had 10 kills in that first meeting against Florida. Right now, the Gators just clicking. It's a really nice swing by Carly Snyder on the left side for Florida because she knows Kentucky's going to have a big middle block. Whether it's Kaz Brown or Emily Franklin, she chooses to go down the line there. You avoid that block, but you also avoid the defensive play of Ashley Dushek. Keep it out of her lap. The service error from Ramat al Hassan. She rotates out. Rachel Kramer, the 6'8 sophomore, comes in the front row. And Gabby Curry back to serve, the freshman out of Buford, Georgia. Started for Dushek, you mentioned, who was out with injury for the early part of the year and then did a very good job. A net violation called on the Wildcats. A nice back row attack there by Paige Hammonds out of middle back and what was somewhat of an out of system pass. Paige does a good job calling for that and because Kentucky's doing everything they can to get a triple block up on a back row attack, they're able to pull them into the net there. But once again, it's a Kentucky error that results in that Florida point. Edmund adjust. Canope, tight pass. And Emily Franklin handles the overpass beautifully. And that's one you'd like to have back because the Florida block does everything right. They slow that down. Canope has an ability to make a play on it, but you get the overpass there. And there's just nothing that Monterey can do with that one. She's been playing her best volleyball, has Emily Franklin during this 14 match. Win streak. And what they're calling there is that Ali Monterey actually went under the net. So her entire foot over that line that's directly under the net. And obviously that is a rule because of safety issues and rolling ankles if you were to do that. And tough block as Kramer went right at Kaz Brown. And number seven in white is fearless at the net. This game is such a game of momentum, and if there's a play that creates momentum, it's a stuff block. And not only does Kaz Brown stuff block it, but she has the ability to celebrate in a way that creates a momentum of its own. Once more, a net violation called on Florida, so that helps Kentucky run off four straight points. Best three of five sets have to Go to 25, win by two. And Shina Joseph with the tip shot. Well, she has been crushing it as of late. The last four matches, Shina Joseph has really risen to the occasion. She's hit 409 in those last four matches, 34 kills. And Florida said that they've really worked on their right side connection. After that loss at Kentucky, they realized they needed another wrinkle offensively, and that can be Shina Joseph. There from Ali Monterey, the back row attack, the tip shot from Snyder, and diving there was Madison Lilly. The free ball. Florida with another opportunity, and right at Madison Lilly, high in the sky, bump set, match. There's great play again by the libero Canope.
Florida gets the point. And that's going to be a back row attack call, exactly, because their setter for Kentucky coming out of the back row, trying to make a play on that. She's obviously not intending to send it over the net, but because the pass was tight. But what I like, both of these teams realize that if they can attack from the right side, that even if it's not a kill, they're forcing the setters to make first contact and take the other team out of system. So there is there's a lot of chess match going on within this one right now. Kentucky, five kills, five errors for Florida. They're hitting 250. Mackenzie Watson on the serve. Florida passing with just two there in that rotation. So Kentucky down by just two. And Rachel Kramer, who was the most successful Gator offensively in the first meeting between these two teams of 15 kills, has had a couple errors, a couple miss hits here. Monterey decides to go to Joseph. Joseph down the line. The block did not close there, and I expected China Joseph to swing angle on that one. She surprises me as she cranks one down the line. So Canope on the serve, and ABCA All-American honorable mention. Oh boy, Edmund just took a big hack at that one. Leah Edmund said coming into this one, I actually like swinging against a big block because I can see the hands. And she said in Gainesville, we kept reminding each other, swing high, go for hands. And she has consistently done that. It takes a lot of discipline from the left side to swing high off those hands. The Florida block has slowed a couple of those down, and now it's up to the defense back there to make a play out of those. Edmund to Lily to Skinner. And the attack error gives Florida the point. In what looks like a big error, you think, whoa, she really missed the court. It's because these players are trained to swing high and to go for those hands. So when there's a miss, it looks like a really wide miss, but it can just be a miss by centimeters when you're going, a centimeter when you're going for those hands. Kaz Brown says, I'll take it. Folks, just want to remind you, this is some high level volleyball. Two top 10 teams in the country out of the SEC. And Kaz Brown, along with her counterpart, Emily Franklin, and then of course for Florida, Ramad Alhassan and Rachel Kramer, four of the best middle blockers, not just in this league, but in the country. You're seeing some elite level athleticism. These players play so high above the net. It's not just because they're tall, but the leaping ability you're seeing tonight is incredible. For Cheyenne Husky, who has been put in for three rotations, great setters dump there. Cheyenne does a really great job of holding her head steady. Both hands come up. She disguises it so well. But Tiffany, as we talk about the great middle blockers in this match, interestingly, it's Cheyenne Husky who has the second best blocking numbers, only to Ramad Hassan in this match. As a setter, she is the best blocking setter in the country. And right there, she pairs up with Ramad Al Hassan for the deadliest block in the league. As you put Cheyenne Husky next to Ramad Al Hassan, that's a tough wall to hit around. Absolutely, Al Hassan, second in the country, right behind Chiaka Akbagu with 1.77 blocks per set. Cheyenne Husky at 1.2 blocks per set. And that was tight to the net, Madison Lilly, and it was just so hard for her not to actually go into it. She's called for the net violation, 1914 Florida. Well, the Gators on the road and feeling good here at Memorial Coliseum. Yesterday, if you were in the mood, it was Halloween. And so the Gators decided to take part in the festivities and dress up in their costumes. And certainly, does that look familiar? That was Khaleesi, okay, and her dragon. Watch out now. And then we have a little Lion King, you know, action perhaps here. The lion, the giraffe, popcorn. There we go. The Gators traveled in style, but that's my winner right there. We got some wobbly men. And Coach Wise with the quarterback, if you could read those lips. But if you look down low, down under in this one, Shina Joseph, the scuba diver. She might be my winner. She could be like, you know, like it was Steve, the scuba diver. Yeah. It's Shina, the scuba yes. diver. Yep. So these Gators playing awfully well. Number four team in the country, and 
Of course, everyone is curious to know just what the committee is thinking about as the top 10 rankings will be released in our next match here on ESPNU during the Texas-Kansas State match. And certainly Florida interested in wondering where they may fall along with Kentucky as well. I think this Gator fan might be looking up the top 10 on this phone. He <laughs> might be using the ESPN app. Who knows, you know? But with Kentucky as number three in the RPI, Florida at number five. And you've got to think, again, Missy, the winner of this one could put themselves in very good position to potentially host a regional. Yeah, it's easy to get wrapped up in the fact that the SEC crown is on the line. These girls are playing for a ring. But this one has huge national implications in that Florida is not, excuse me, that volleyball is not a predetermined regional site. So the winner of this one you think would put themselves in a really good position to possibly host a regional right now in the latest RPI release. The top five sp spots are all hogged by Big Ten and SEC schools. Two conferences in that top five in the RPI. And we were here a couple of years ago when the Wildcats last hosted a regional in 2015. Another great effort. Florida gets the point. And again, we're not lost on the fact that you know Florida shared the crown with Mizzou last year for the SEC title. Kentucky looking to win their first outright since 1988. That was one more kill up there by Carly Snyder just moments ago. And do you see the trend in that they swing down the line and they continue to avoid Ashley Dushek? I just can't say enough about her presence, the libero in the black jersey for Kentucky. Her presence on the floor completely changes an opponent's game plan. She is so good on first contact that teams do everything they can to keep it out of her hands. LSU, who we mentioned earlier, the one SEC team to push Kentucky to five, they did that partly because they were able to keep Ashley Dushek out of out of the picture as much as possible. They served 40, 40 balls at Gabby Curve. And I think Ashley Dushek passed about 15. So in serve receive, they did everything to stay away from her. And defensively, they swung away from her. Gabby Curry actually led the team in digs that night. And that's because teams are going to do everything they can to take her out. Lily Mack on the right side. Well, Darian Mack is pretty much a Gator killer. Anytime that she's faced the Gators, she's put up solid numbers. She had a season-high 13 just a couple of weeks ago in Gainesville, playing on the right side. I have so much respect for this young lady. She came to Florida as a sophomore a couple of years ago as an outside hitter and led this team in kills. And then due to personnel changes and people they've brought in, she's been asked to change her role on this team. And I tell you what, she's done it with grace and with confidence and with a whole lot of ability as she's proven herself on the left and the right in 10 in this league. Valuable piece for the Wildcats, but right now they're trailing by five as Florida feeling mightily confident on the road here in Memorial Coliseum. Carly Snyder back to serve. And Florida didn't even wait to see how this one goes for Paige Hammonds across the front row. They, from the very beginning, have gone with Mia Sokolowski across the front row. So that was you know, determined pre-match. They're using her on the left side. And also notice how much they're using Shina Joseph on the right side. And as you mentioned, why would they not with the numbers she has been on fire the last four matches? And they call on number five in the middle, Rachel Kramer. Kramer? You mentioned had 15 kills against Kentucky, but she's also coming off a terrific match against Mississippi State. Had no errors and 11 kills with a 733 hitting percentage. So both she and Ramat, the other middle blocker for the Gators, both with no error matches this season. Florida also doing a good job sending choice balls to the back row. They've got a senior in Carly Snyder who has experience. You know, she's playing the best volleyball she's played of her career. Why overload your outsides? A Mia Sokolowski out on the left antenna with a bump set. They're going to give that to Carly Snyder. What a great, jo what great job she does there. Florida playing for set point. But Leah Edmond extending this first set. 24-19 Gators.
and Al Hassan hung in the air just a little bit and downs it. So the Gators take the first set 25 19. A nice little mix up there at the end by Al Hassan as she goes on the slide. We've said before, we don't see this often from Al Hassan, but when she does it, it's successful. And with that, Florida is also successful in set one as they lead us 25 19.